कमर्शियल होम किट सेंसर्स फिफ्टी डॉलर ईच हब अनदर सिक्सटी एंड यू आर लॉक्ड इन टू आई इको सिस्टम बट वट इफ आई टेल यू दैट यू कुड मॉनिटर अप टू टेन लोकेशन विद द कॉस्ट ऑफ ओनली टू कमर्शियल सेंसर्स विद द बैटरीज लास्टिंग ओवर अयर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट वन टू टू ईयर्स ऑन अ सिंगल चार्ज एंड दैट्स वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू बिल्ड टूडे इट्स एन अल्ट्रा लो पावर्ड ई एस पी थर्टी टू सी थ्री सुपर मिनी पावर्ड होम किट सेंसर्स दैट वर्क बोथ विद होम किट एंड होम असिस्टेंट नाउ इफ यू नीड मोर रीजन हेयर आर फॉर मोर रीजन वाई यू शुड कंसिडर बिल्डिंग डी आई वाई होम किट सेंसर्स इन स्टेड ऑफ गोइंग फॉर आफ्टर मार्केट वॉन्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन सेम बैटरी लाइफ नाउ इफ यू यूज ई एस पी थर्टी टू सी थ्री सुपर मिनी एंड सेंसर्स लाइक ए एच टी टेन विच इज आई टू जी सेंसर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट ट्वेंटी माइक्रो एम्स मैक्सिमम इन स्लीप मोड गिविंग यू अ प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ ऑफ वन टू टू ईयर्स सेकेंड it works where wifi network is not available so these sensors which we are going to build does not require wifi connection so if you are going to install these in your garage or attic or hard to reach places where wifi signal is not available and you don't plan to install any wifi extender these are the sensor that makes sense now most importantly cost i bought 20 pieces of esp32 c3 super mini from alibaba for just 35 dollars or inr 3000 rupees that comes down to 1 dollar 75 cents for each microcontroller now if we add the cost of the sensor which we are going to integrate with this microcontroller this can range from somewhere around 5 dollars to 15 dollars that's the max so in 15 dollars you can have a fully functional a uh, sensor that can be a temperature or humidity sensor it can be a occupancy sensor it can be a motion sensor it can be a voc sensor or it can be a any other sensor that home kit supports but how does it work since it does not connects to wifi well it uses esp now protocol uh, we are going to use span point from the home span library and how it works is that we create a transmitter where the sensor is connected and this is completely powered by a battery and there is a receiver or a bridge which is connected to the home kit or the home app and it's always online so your transmitter or the sensor which we are going to build will go to deep sleep for like 10 minutes and then it will wake up for a fraction of seconds it will wake up immediately read the data from the sensor and send it to our bridge which acts like a hub now this hub as compared to commercially available cost just $1.75 or less than 150 rupees while a commercially available hub is $60 and commercially available sensors can range from anywhere $20 to like $40 to $100 so the transmitter sends the data via ESP now protocol so that uses mac address of the receiver and it does not use wifi connection so it's very quick it does not consumes much power and it remains in deep sleep for most of the time now based on what kind of sensor you are creating you can uh, change this deep sleep functionality or add an external button interrupt to you know just check the temperature or the air quality whatever sensor you are creating based on that you can achieve that so let's come to how to build this now for this project as i said you can use esp32 c3 super mini or any super mini module which are available and since we are going to build for this particular project our temperature and humidity sensor or a climate sensor for our bedroom so we are going to use our eht10 sensor which we already have it's a i2c sensor and it consumes around 0.5 micro amps when the esp32 c3 is in deep sleep so it's highly power efficient and that's the reason we are going with it now you can choose any other sensor there are a lot of other i2c sensors available so you can use any of those and you can also use multiple sensor so if you want to monitor for example the ambient light also or you want to monitor the air quality also so you can install these uh, like two three sensors with one single board you can install it in a room and then program it to go into deep sleep for like 10 minutes and then uh, after 10 minutes it sends all the data all the information from all the sensors to your hub and that hub sends that data to home kit and you can view it on your phone and based on that you can create automations in your home kit app and you can also ask siri about various status like for example you can ask for the air quality in your bedroom if you are installed there or temperature and humidity data or you can also use a sensor like ld2410c and create a occupancy sensor now that is going to consume a lot of power 
So that might not last up to a year, but it's going to last for a few weeks to months and that depends on the usage. But let's come back to our project. So first, what we are going to do is we need to find out the MAC addresses of both the ESP32 boards that we are going to use. So one will be the transmitter, as I said, another will be a receiver. So we are going to find those MAC addresses and we are going to node it down. And it's very easy to do. All you have to do is just flash this sketch in your ESP32 board. In the serial monitor, you will see the MAC address. Just note it down. So once you have the MAC address, what you have to do is, uh, this is the sketch for the transmitter side where we will be connecting the AHT10 or the sensor. So this is the sensor module. And here we are going to enter the address, the MAC address of the receiver module or the bridge, the second ESP board. So we are going to put that MAC address right here. And once this is done, we are going to save it and upload it to our transmitter or the sensor module. So this is flashed and we can see output values in the serial monitor. So it is showing the battery level and other data. So we are good with it. Now let's program the receiver or the hub or the bridge, whatever you want to call it. So we are going to program it. Now here, all we have to do is update the MAC address of the transmitter or the sensor. So we are going to do that. We already have it. So we just going to do that. And once this is done, we don't need to change any other thing unless you are using some other sensor. So this is done. Let's save it and upload it. Now, once the transmitter is programmed, we need to connect it to the Wi-Fi network. And for that, we need to type W in the serial monitor. It's going to scan all the available Wi-Fi networks. And then we need to enter the SSID name of the Wi-Fi network to which we want to connect our sensor. And once that's done, we need to enter the password of that Wi-Fi network and this is going to connect. Now next, we are going to set it up in the Apple Home app and that's very easy. All we have to do is go to our Home app. We'll open the Home app and tap on the plus icon. Here you will see add accessory, tap on it and then click on more options. Now here you will see your device which we just programmed and this is the bridge. All you have to do is tap on it, add anyway and then enter this code 46637. 726. Once you enter this, tap on add and then complete the setup. You can choose room, you can name it and you will see that two sensor values are added, humidity and the temperature. Battery values will not be shown. I mean, those are shown when the battery is critically low here. But if you add this, I mean, you can also add this instead of adding to home kit. As I said, this also works with home assistant. So you can add the sensor to home assistant also. All you have to do is enter the same code. So there you can see the battery value as shown here. If you go back to the serial monitor of the transmitter circuit, previously when the hub was not programmed or turned on, it was showing failure. I mean, data was not being sent. So it was showing failure. Now when the data is being sent, it is saying success. So with this, we are sure that our transmitter sensor that we have built which is a climate sensor, is able to send the data to our receiver or the hub. Now, hub is going to be powered by a USB or a constant power supply. So we can install it anywhere. Like you can hide it anywhere behind your sofa or anywhere. You do not have to make it visible. It can go invisible and you can use an external antenna maybe to extend its range further. I mean, you don't have to install it on the sensor side or the transmitter side, but you can definitely install it on the receiver side to increase the range. Now, this is going to work for like uh, 50 to 80 feet very easily. So no problem with that. Beyond that, you might want to use an antenna. Now, once the receiver module is added to the home app, uh, you will see that the real-time data transmitted by the sensor is being updated on the home app. And these are the real values and you can now install the hub or this sensor anywhere powered by a USB power supply. And this sensor, which is powered by a battery, you can power it through battery. Any battery you can use 1000 mAh, 2000 mAh, depending how much life you want. Like So for example, I have this uh, case which I downloaded for uh, PIR based motion sensor, but I'm using it uh, to for all of my sensor. I'm modifying it and I'm using this for all of my sensor that I'm building. It contains a battery and the sensor which we are building for the home kit. And this is completely like we can 
uh, just use some magnet and the metal strip and wherever we want to put it just place it there it's going to stick and will remain there and when you have to charge it just remove it charge it anyways uh, if you are building a climate sensor like we just built it's going to last somewhere uh, between one to two years so you don't have to worry about charging this device now as i said you can build multiple sensors and all can communicate with one single hub and all you have to do is just program that sensor make sure you add the mac address of the hub now if you want to place a sensor at another place or for example, I have three floors. So one hub is going to cover only one floor. So I'll have to install at least three uh, such hubs, which cost again, $1.75. So very cheap and I can install them like on each floor. They can be hidden behind any power wall and I don't need it to be seen. I mean, it can be hidden. So yeah, that's how you build a smart ultra low powered smart home kit sensors. Uh, for just fraction of dollars and again ESP32 C3 Super Mini is my go-to device right now I'm using it for all of my project and you can go and buy this from Alibaba it's not sponsored you can go and check it out you will find it they are available for very cheap and the cost that I've told you that include shipping as well now if you're going to build this project make sure you share with us through comments if you find or encounter any issue programming your sensor do let me know and i'm going to help you troubleshoot the issue and program your sensors and please hit the like button if you find this helpful subscribe to my channel to support me and for more such interesting smart home diy projects thank you for watching